Hey Stampers, this is Travis. Welcome to Video Tuesday. And so we are going to continue through the month of July with our Try a Technique videos. And so today, our third one, we are doing a technique that um, is new to me. Um, I'm calling it debossing with blend markers. I don't know if it has an official name, but that's what I'm calling it because that's actually what it is. So, um, let's see, before we get started, a few things. I did use the layer, Layered Florals 3D Folder on this technique, and I just wanna show you something about the, the three, about embossing folders. So, the 3D folders, you, you only use two plates, right, on your cut and emboss. You use a platform, which is one, and then you use the gray plate, which is four, and that's for 3D folders. Um, the, and But you still need to make a, and I call it a sandwich. So your platform would be the bottom bread, bread, and the gray fold, the gray plate would be the top bread, right? But you still need to put your folder with your cardstock in it between it. So this would be like the meat. If you don't, this is what happens to your folders, okay? So what happened here is somebody ran this through, not me, Somebody ran this through with the pl with the two correct plates, one and three, but apparently put the embossing folder on top, and when it ran through, it warped. So this will happen to your dies also if you don't make a sandwich. So always, always, always make a sandwich. If it if you don't know how to use the cut and emboss, look at the platform. It gives you all the instructions. Okay, and uh, the second. Um, two, which is the other piece of the um, platform, okay? Uh, they used to be attached and now they're separated. But anyway, always look at the instructions or ask somebody, ask me, because this still works. This folder still works, but it is, it bugs me <laughs> and it's probably going to bug you. So your, uh, your dies will also warp, only it'll be worse because they're metal, so they will also warp if you don't do the sandwich. Okay, all that being said. Now, um, one other fun thing. I have discovered a fingernail coloring pencil. And I don't know, I'm sure these have been around for decades. Um, and I, I don't know if I just, because I like white tip nails. Okay, so I like my nails to be tipped white but I don't like getting manicures. For one thing, the nail polish doesn't last. Secondly, it's expensive. <laughs> and um, I like the white tips better because if you use colored nail polish, then it ends up sometimes on your cardstock. And that really isn't good for me, I'm being a stamper. So um, how do these work? And I was under the impression I knew, but you have to wet your fingernail. And then you use this and you just color in the tip and then it stays on relatively well. And then I just put clear nail polish over it. So who knew? I mean, these are probably super cheap. cheap. Well, they probably used to be super cheap. They're probably not anymore, but <laughs> nothing's cheap anymore. But anyway, long story short, I'm loving the white tips that it, you know, and if it peels off or whatever, you just repeat it. So there you go. Okay, so today we are going to make this card. And as I said, this technique, technique is called debossing with blend markers. Let's get started. Okay, so you see I did some pre-work and I ran it through my embossing folder, right? And then you get the raised side and then you get the deboss side. So for this technique, you wanna use the deboss side. So your flowers are recessed or whatever is recessed, and um, you color them in with your blend markers. So obviously I didn't want you to sit here and watch me doing that. I just had one flower left. And so um, th this is a six by six folder, which works out really well because I don't need the full six by six. So I just colored in the piece that I need. So you just take your blend marker and I'm using um, Lemon Lolly, and I'm just going to color in the flower. Now, we'll see how this turns out. But you're just going to color in the flower. 
Hopefully you can see me. I'll hold it up so now you can see me. See it. Okay, so you color in the flower. Super easy because it's it gives you the guide, right? It's debossed. And then you just take and color in. You can use this tip too, but I prefer the brush tip. All right, now comes the cool part. So you're gonna use your memento pad and I've got a couple of them here because I don't know if they're juicy enough. They need to be pretty well inked up. And I'm gonna put this on here. I just had somebody ask me about this, this glass plate. The glass plate is available to purchase. Um, they weren't available for a while, a long time because they only had a few that were available. Demonstrators could purchase one for a short window. And then they were actually for new people. So when you were signed up, you might, you could get one, but um, now they're available again. So for $60, you get this cool glass. Okay. And like I told her, it's easy cleanup. The grid never, never will wear off because it's behind the glass. Also, you get this, which is the giant chamois. And I love the thinness of it. And it's easy to play with. And, and it'll, if it dries out, it's going to get hard, but like cardboard, but you just wet it under the sink and it gets nice again. You also get this, and I've got all my blocks on here. I should move these so I can show you. Um, this is the silicone pad that also comes with it. Okay, so you get this and you can do ink, you know, you can do inks on here. You can put, um, you can cut uh, your, a part of a chamois if you want to cut this. I have a friend who cut hers up. So she cut this down, right? She just cut a piece of that off and she keeps it on there all times. How cool. Um, this side, you can put your, um, you can put your spots over here and they actually stay because they, they're good in the grooves. So this is a valuable tool also. And those are three pieces that you get when you purchase the glass mat. Okay, so $60. Um, you're going to ask me the number. I can post it if you want or text me if you want to know what it is. Okay, so here we go. I think I've got them all colored in. So what colors did I use? I used light and dark balmy blue. I used light and dark highland heather and I used lemon lolly. And then I also used um, light and dark um, granny apple green. So for the dots inside the flowers and some of the, there's very few leaves. And um, I'm thinking you could also do this technique. If you're not into coloring it, you could do any, you could actually run the embossing folder through card, just plain cardstock, like a light colored cardstock. What if I had run it through just like lemon lolly? All right. And then did this technique and everything would just be yellow, right? When I do this. So let's give it a whirl. Let's see how this works. Okay, so you're going to take your, <clears throat> I'm nervous because if this messes up, you know, I have to start over. But anyway, so you're going to take your um, memento pad and you're going to scrape it just like that. And you really want to get it inked up. Now that's not really very dark. So I'm going to try this one. Maybe it's a little juicier. You don't need to go really heavy handed because you don't want to color in all your flowers, but Ooh. yeah, it's pretty. Although I think this pad might have been better. You may have to ink up your memento pad before you start just to give yourself enough ink. The idea is to get the all the background colored in. This is sometimes hard to do. I'm working on it. And if you get any ink on your glass mat, just wipe that off because this is, um, well, it's alcohol-based, but it's easy cleanup, right? So you can see even on this white side that it's cool. Right, so if that had been just yellow cardstock or pink, that that would just be debossed. I love it. 
so I have no idea if, what, if I'm calling this the right thing, but you can probably go online and see lots of ideas with this technique. Okay, I think I'm pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a card with this. And I'm gonna wipe that off. I don't want that black on any of my other card stock. All right, and how do you clean your glass with when it's got glue on it? I just use some Germex or some kind of a hand sanitizer and it cleans the glue off. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut that. And the size that I'm gonna cut it is, I'm gonna cut it down to, first I'm gonna cut this corner off that I didn't color in, just one edge, okay. And then I'm gonna make this, um, like just a little over three and three fourths. Okay, and then I want this to be, I'm going to actually make a really cute card with this. So I have strips of uh, two pieces of cardstock and I've cut these down to, I'm gonna ask me the size. This is four by three and a half and four by one and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this down. I'll cut this strip off right here, kind of like that edge. Okay, so I'm gonna make this mm, just under one and a half. And then just under three and a half always cut them down more. I'm going to throw these away, right? I can probably use those on another card. Okay, so let's see how this works. I have those pieces and I have these pieces. And now I'm going to mount this on Highland Heather. Okay, so I think since I'm using um, embossing folder, which has a lot of texture, I'm going to go ahead and use liquid glue make sure this is the right size before I start to glue it down. I think it's perfect. Okay, so when you use your blend markers, you're gonna get this color on the back, which is no big deal, right? That's kind of what you want. You want the color, you do want the color to come through and that's normal for a blend marker because they're alcohol based and they're gonna seep right through the cardstock to the back. I guess another idea you could do is if you wanted to do the opposite, I'm thinking here as I'm gluing this, <laughs> you could color in, you could actually use your markers and you could color in all the inside, right? And then you could run it through and all your flowers would be dark. If you flipped them over, does that make sense? Okay, looking good. All right, now I have a piece of lemon lolly. So I'm using the colors. This is actually Highland Heather cardstock, and this is lemon lolly. So I'm gonna fold this in half. So this is five and a half by eight and a half, all right? All right, so there's the front of my card. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use my adhesive. And I'm going to attach this to my card base. gap than I wanted, but hang on, maybe I can flip that up. No, I can't. Good. Okay. Kind of like it to be even all around. Okay. There is my card. I just made a, made those two pieces for a little interest. Now I've got Unbounded Love here, and I'm going to stamp Unbounded Love, uh, I think this, May All Your Wishes Come True, and finding that is interesting. Nope, that's not it. There's so many, here they are. 
all these uh, sentiments are hard to read upside that way. So now I think I'm going to stamp this in, should I stamp it in black or should I stamp it in another color? I think I'm gonna stamp it in balmy blue. I'll try balmy blue. Okay, I need a little piece of white cardstock. Do I have a piece of white cardstock? Yeah, I do. Oh no, that's not big enough. I have all these scraps here, but boy, they're all small. Okay. Mm -hmm. All your wishes come true. And I'm going to punch that out with my labeled with love punch. And then I'm going to punch out a yellow one. this in half lengthwise like that I'll put some adhesive on the back of this it's a little tricky because it has to line up perfectly I realize it looks weird on the side can you see that I have a little yellow at the bottom finger. A little yellow right there. Make sure this doesn't hang over and look weird. Good. Okay. Got a big piece of a dimensional here. A little tiny one. And one more. Okay. So I have that done. I don't want to take away too much from this card because I don't think it needs it. And I want to cover up all my purple flowers or where do I want to put this? Oh, I think I'm going to put it right there. All right. So now, and there's my finished card. And again, I'm calling this debossing with your blend markers. So I hope you enjoyed the Try a Technique video, and um, I will see you on Friday for our next video. My name is Travis Bossler, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in St. Louis, Missouri, and thanks for watching and subscribing. I appreciate you.